Good morning everyone, welcome to our educational tour orientation for the Bachelor of Science in Hospitality Management program. So we will have this educational tour in Cebu, Philippines. So I'm thrilled to see all of you here via Google Meet as we prepare for our upcoming trip from April 1 to April 3, 2024. So throughout this online orientation, we will cover everything you need to know to ensure a smooth and enjoyable experience during our time in Cebu. So, but before we will dive into the details, I would like to take some moment to express my excitement for this incredible opportunity. Again, Cebu is not only known for its stunning beaches and rich cultural heritage, but also for its thriving hospitality industry. So as a future professionals in this field, this trip will provide invaluable insights and hands-on experiences that will undoubtedly enhance your education and future career prospects. So let's make the most of this opportunity throughout our time together today. Feel free to ask any questions. Um, you can also chat here in the Google Meet and you can also type your comments, suggestions, questions queries in the Google form that I sent to you. So once again, let's work together to make this educational tour a truly memorable and enriching experience for all of us. So before I will um, dig into the details of this educational tour orientation, I will discuss to you the overview of this orientation. So there are six um, topic that we are going to talk about first is the rationale that's the first part and next we will talk about the tour objectives the third one the itinerary the fourth one the travel guidelines or setting expectations the fifth one is the packing tips or the friendly reminders and lastly we'll talk about the hazard identification risk assessment and precautionary measures so let's start first with the first one the rationale so why we need to conduct educational tours because it is part of the curriculum enhancement and it is also um, part in the syllabus in your courses or subjects also why we need to conduct educational tours because it will broaden the student's learning, your learning opportunities and the feel of the real world, not just in the four corner of the classroom. Also, it will serve as a powerful motivator to strengthen the academic industry linkage. Okay. And also, uh, the second question, why we need to conduct this online orientation? The reason for this is for the awareness and reminders as part of the preparation. Also set the right expectations and emphasize of the objectives and also the risk assessment and precautionary measures. And we will address your concern as a students or participants on this educational tour. And lastly, this is one of the compliance to the CMO mandate or CHED MEMO mandates so that's the number one rationale so now let's proceed to the number two which is the tour objectives first we will talk about the ultimate objectives of the tour first it will reinforce our classroom discussions so the faculty or the instructors will not just talk or discuss in the classroom but we will reinforce this by having this educational tour the next one is to be able to accomplish the destination, destination assessment. And now with the specific objectives of this tour, first to observe tourism patterns. Okay, We have this uh, educational tour and we have this privilege to observe. The second one to be able to visit local destinations with international tourist movements. What are those? First is the profile of visitors. Second one, the motivations. And the third one, local tourism programs which have contributed to the tourism activities. And we also have typology of tourism as an activity present in the destinations. 
also the trends concerns and issues okay so we will you will be able to observe on these things the trends the new um, trends in the hospitality industry and also in the tourism industry and lastly it representative from the private and government sectors so that is number two now let's proceed to the itinerary so again this educational tour in Cebu we have these three days and two nights again the location is in Cebu so I will talk first the before the detail of the time and date and the activity I will talk about first about the inclusions of this educational tour so let's start with the transportation so we have this R3 chartered aircon bus okay so we're going to have this aircon bus from Kandihai to Hitafe okay from Kandihai to Hitafe and then we will also have this from Tubigun to Kandihai also we have this aircon tourist bus all throughout the tour duration in Cebu okay not just in Bohol but also in Cebu and with the welcome tarpaulin you can observe that in the uh, front part of the tourist bus okay there's a tarpaulin there also we have this one-way fast craft tourist boat accommodation Hitapi to Cebu by uh, ocean jet okay from Hitapi to Cebu we will have this ocean jet and also one way fast craft tourist boat accommodation from Cebu to Tubigon, but we will have this light cap. Okay. Next, one also of the inclusions were meals. We have this full board meals all throughout the tour duration. Okay, full board meals. We have this free meals throughout our tour duration. And it is in the restaurants as listed in the itinerary, which I'm going to discuss later on. Next, we have these meals. Meals will be carefully chosen by what? The tour agency. And it will also supply of one bottle mineral water uh, that will be given per day. And also as to lecture and demo with certif certificates. Okay, so we'll not just observe, um, look on the different tourist destinations, but also we will have this lecture and demo. And we will, or you will receive a certificates. First one is the lecture on revenue management. Okay, it is uh, very specific or related to our field in the hospitality management. And we also have this basic resort operations. So this topic it is more on the managerial positions. Okay. So we'll have that in the waterfront or seda. And also we have this lecture on career talk or any suggested topic at the Abaca group of companies. Again, you will receive a certificates. The third one is the basic F and B. Also, the housekeeping and fine dining. Okay, they will have this lecture and demo about the table etiquette or to the napkin folding and career in cruise ship at MIHCA. Another in, uh, inclusions of this educational tour the entrance fee. So, all entrance fee for the hotel, institutions, airport, ocean park, and other tourist destinations are already included in the payment. And as to souvenir, we have this souvenir t-shirt or batch t-shirt. And it will be given to each students and also the faculty. It is a 100% cotton or sublimation. We also have these old tour events are to be documented with photos. Okay, so we have this. Expect that we have this photos and album with the USB. Okay, we have this free USB that will be given to the group or in the batch. 
Also, we have this complementary prizes. You will receive prizes. Example for this is the handicraft fashion accessories. Uh, we also call this borloloi and delicacies for the games that will be given. Also, one of the souvenirs is the complimentary welcome lay. It will be given to each students and also the faculty. We also have this complimentary freebies and prizes for the raffle after the tour. So after the tour, we will have this raffle and you will receive freebies and prizes. And also you will have this complimentary certificate of completion. And it is per students signed by the companies visited. So every company that we visited, you will receive a certificate of completion. So it will be uh, beneficial for you, especially if you will apply for a job. And lastly, you have this complimentary journal with pen. It will be given by the tour agency. You will be given a journal with pen. Again, it will be given to you as a student, each one of you, for the company visit during the field trip. So now I'm going to talk about the detail on the day one to day three of our educational tour. So I'll just only talk about the general overview. And I think one week before our departure, the tour agency will discuss it more um, specifically. Because we will expect that there's some um, changes, maybe, on some detail of this um, itinerary. Or maybe we will have this um, reorientation in the actual date in Cebu by the tour agency. Okay, so this is just an overview and I think there are some, there's a possible changes on this. So at 5.30 a.m. in day one, we will have the assembly time at Baisu Kandihai, okay, in our campus. Take note, you need to take your light breakfast before coming to the pier. It will be picked up by the chartered bus Kandihai to Hitafe, from Kandihai to Hitafe. And at 8.15 in the morning, estimated time of departure, from Hitafe to Cebu via Ocean Jet, as I have discussed earlier. So the travel time is one hour and a half. So at 9.30, the estimated time of arrival in Cebu, so we are in the Cebu in this time, um, we will proceed to your assigned bus assignment. Okay? So there are possible that we have this bus A, B, C, and D. And we'll have these snacks will be served on board by Jollibee. At 10 in the morning, the bus A and bus B explore the Cebu Ocean Park. At 11 in the morning, at the main tank gallery feeding. And the bus C, Waterfront Hotel or Casino or Seda Ayala Hotel. Bus D will be in the Plantation Bay Resort or the Abaca Group, the Reef Resort in Mactan. So the different buses have different destinations in order to, you know, to save time and to avoid congestions. So at 11.30 in the morning, the bus A and B will have the lunch aqua dining beside the Tang Gallery at Cebu Ocean Park by luncheon Inn. And the bus C and D will have the lunch semi-fine dining at MIHCA. At 12.30 in the afternoon or noon, the bus A and B will have in the Birch Show Meet and Greet. And at the 2 p.m., the bus A will be in the Front Hotel or Casino or say the Ayala Hotel. The B on the Plantation Bay Resort in the Abaca Reef Resort in Mactan. And bus C and D in the Magsasai Center for Hospitality and Culinary Arts, which is the cruise ship and cooking demo. So we will be able to observe the cooking demo there. At 4 p.m., you will have this chicken at the hotel that uh, is being choice or chosen by the tour agency. Okay, so there's some uh, possible changes on this part on the actual schedule. At 5.30 in the afternoon, you will have this dinner luxury buffet at Vikings SM City. 
So this is for day 1 and now let's proceed to day 2. At 6 in the morning, you will have this breakfast which is a buffet and start at the hotel that is being chosen. At 9 in the morning, the bus A will have this plantation. So there is a, you know, a changes of the assigned destinations. Okay, so I will not, no longer read the detail in this part. At 5, I mean 11.30 in the morning, the bus A and B will be launched in the semi fine dining at MIC. M-I-H-C-A. And C and D will have this lunch aqua dining beside the Tang Gallery at Cebu Ocean Park by lunch night. Okay, so there is a changes on the schedule to make sure that every students have the same experience. And at 12.30 p.m., the bus C and D will go to the Birch Show Meet and Greet because in the day one, the bus A and B went to the Birch Show Meet and Greet. Okay, so there's a changes on the destinations on this time. And at 4 p.m., you will head back to the hotel of choice, prepare for the culmination. So you have this culmination in day 2. Okay, so you need to take note on this one. You have this culmination in day 2. And at 5.30 p.m., you'll have this dinner at the hotel of choices. Then culmination follows. So after the dinner, you will have this culmination. Okay, so at that time, you have, I think it is also discussed in the stakeholders meeting in the library that you have this team party and you have suggested on this part. And on the last day, in the day 3 at 6 in the morning, you will have this breakfast buffet again starts at the hotel of choice. And 8.30 in the morning, you will have this lecture and demo. This is what I have talked a while ago that you will also receive a certificate after the lecture and demo. Follows after the breakfast topics to be discussed any of the following. Uh, it's either the hotel operations, housekeeping, and bed makeup, or front office, or any suggestions. And then at 11 in the morning, we'll have this checkout at the hotel of choice. Then proceed to the city times square. And at 11.30, we'll have this lunch luxury buffet at Buffet 101 International Cuisine. It was, I believe it is a very nice experience as we have this buffet at Buffet 101 International Cuisine. You will experience different dishes from different nationalities and different cuisine. And also at 12 p.m., we'll have this Twin Island Tour in Magellan's Cross, Basilica de Santo Nino, and Cebu National Museum. And at 4.30, we'll have this Kazuwa Prime, a Japanese cuisine at No Star with demonstrations. And we will uh, serve the snacks at this time. And then at 7 p.m., you will have this dinner buffet. Eat, eat all you can at Kabalin. And the rest of the time, mulling at SM Seaside. So you will have this free time to have it mulling at SM Seaside. And at, at in the 10 p.m., you will proceed to the pier for departure. Because again, this is the day three and the last day of our educational tour. And then the estimated time to departure, one in the morning. From Cebu to Tubigon via light cut and then estimated time of arrival to Bigon Pier it will pick up by the chartered bus. And then at 5 in the morning and the following day, estimated time of arrival in Baisu Kandihai Campus. So that is the itinerary from itinerary from day one to day three. So let's proceed to the number four, the travel guidelines and setting expectations. First, it is very important, be courteous and congenial at all times, even when encountering things you don't like. You need to be adaptable. Okay, number two, respect for local cultures. Again, if you have some friends, close friends, don't forget to respect the local cultures. The local people you meet are not tourist attractions. This is their home. And act like a guest. Okay, please, students behave 
in the especially on the um, if we will visit on some different cultures or places okay we need to act like a guest and also the for example the, if we will visit a mu monuments these are these are made for admiring please do not climb on them okay please if you have some classmates that will do some unnecessary action please call their attention also included group activities participation is required for scheduled sightseeing and local excursions and for the free time carry the name not just the name but also the address and phone number of your hotel with you at all times next tour guide or the tour escort or teacher must know where you are whom you're with and when you will return it's very important that you need to inform the assigned faculty you need to inform the tour escort you need to inform the tour guide also in your free time be in group of three or four do not be alone next students are never to go off on their own yes as i have discussed a while ago you are expected to be mindful of your own safety and well-being at all times. And in the hotel or in the bus conduct, careful with your room and your bus. You need to remember the bus letter or number and also the hotel rooms. You will be held personally responsible for any damage you cause and you will not be allowed to leave the hotel until the damage is paid for so you need to take care on the hotel rooms and also in the buses also you'll be responsible for phone calls made from your room as well as any extra expenses you need to double check if any amenities is you know it's not free or free okay you need to determine on that because there is an extra expenses possibly for example, if, uh, for example, here, the items from uh, rooms, mini fridge. There are rooms that, that has a products or items in the mini fridge and it is not free. So if you will consume that, you will expect that you need to pay for it. Also, absolutely no running or shouting in the hallways. If you are in the hallways, you are in the you're not in your room please be quiet and do not run so we need to act like a guest again next so as to dress code your attire is an important way of showing respect for your host culture so particularly in religious buildings if we will visit uh, religious buildings you may not be permitted to enter wearing shorts or skirts above the knee or sleeveless blouses or t-shirts no matter how hot it is so if we will have this so you need to screenshot on the itinerary if we were going to visit on that particular day on some religious buildings you need to take note on this on the dress code okay and for the curfew a general midnight curfew applies Unless there is a supervised activity running past midnight, you must be in your hotel rooms from midnight until the next morning. Okay, you need to take note on this one as to curfew. And as to alcohol, you are not, again, you are not permitted to drink alcoholic beverages in all cases. You may not drink hard alcohol or consume alcoholic beverages from the mini fridge under any circumstances. Next, clothing based. So this is for number four, travel guidelines and setting expectations. So we are now in number five, the second to the last, packing tips or friendly reminders. First, clothing based on weather and planned activities. Comfortable shoes, in clothes, no sandals, okay? Or boots plus extra. Again, this is a packing tips and friendly reminders. 
Also, pajamas, slippers, extra days, clothes, and underwear. You need to bring this one. Rain gear, poncho, and boots if possible. And for the medication, you need to have this labeled and turn into adult in charge. Don't forget also, though there are free in the hotel rooms, but don't forget also to bring your toothbrush, or toothpaste, hairbrush, or comb, soap, wash cloth, towel, and other toiletries. Also, dirty laundry bag. Don't forget on this part in order to not to mix the new clothes and the soiled clothes. You need to bring the dirty laundry bag. Also, insect repellent and or sunscreen non-aerosol. Blanket or pad to sleep on if needed. Okay, it is only if needed because there's a free in the hotel rooms. Sleeping bag if needed. Okay, there's also a sleeping bag for travelers. You know that the C-shaped travel sleeping bag. Also the extra sh uh, sheets, blanket or pillow. You know that's a small pillow, not pillow in the bedroom okay next pack light okay bring only what you need bring only what you need ideally in small okay carry on bag which can be fitted in the overhead compartments especially in the um, airplane ideal here is that 22 by 14 by 9 inches and consider also the following, the length of the trip, where you are going, and when you are, and how you are traveling. You need to take note also or consider this following. And now let's proceed to friendly reminders. As you travel, you are present. You are rep, I mean, you are rep. You represent your family, school, and community, and country. If you will do some act that is not good or that is bad, it rep represent your family, school, and community. They will say that these students are from Baisu. They will not mention your name because you represent your family, especially the school. Okay? And also the country, if you will have example trouble from uh, foreign nationalities, so they will say that that is a Filipino doing unnecessary act. So please, this is a friendly reminder. As we travel, we need, we need to be reminded that we represent our family, school, community, and the country. A key to a successful trip is keeping an open mind about new cultures and the occasional inconveniences of travel. It is normal that we will feel inconvenience in travel. That is why I talked earlier that we need to be adaptable. And also we need to be open mind on the new cultures. Okay? So we have different cultures in Bohol, specifically in your uh, different municipalities. So if we will encounter different cultures, we need to respect them. Do not laugh. Okay? Do not make some unnecessary act. To the number six, hazard identification, risk assessment, and precautionary measures. So why H-I-R-A-R-C? Or also known as a, uh, I mean the meaning of this one is hazard identification, risk assessment, and risk control. Why? Because it is to develop in the students, the ability to recognize emergencies and how to respond to them in a way that best protects yourself and everyone else. Okay, it is very important to make appropriate decisions regarding first aid care and act skillfully on the decisions made. Also, for the safety planning with the group, make sure they know the obvious. Okay, do not assume. You need to know the obvious so we need to answer these following questions who is the first aider for this trip you need to know who is the first aider for this trip next what does the first aider do for us what to look for in an emergency 
how to summon help in an emergency, how to treat basic injuries until help is available, where the first aid kit is kept during transit and or at the destinations. So you need to answer these questions, okay? You cannot able to remember this one. Please take some screenshots. Now, the hazard identification risk assessment procedures, let's give it a try, okay? Step 1. We need to identify the hazards. That is anything that may cause harm, okay? We need to identify the hazards. The step 2 is you need to decide who may be harmed and how, okay? As we travel, as we have some... You know, for example, walkings or observations in different areas. We need to think ahead, okay? We need to identify the hazards. And then, we need to decide who may be harmed, who are, who will be the possible person that will be harmed on that, uh, for example, scenario. And then the step three, we need to assess the risk and take some actions. What will be the possible solutions, Okay. And then a word about food allergies. So let's proceed to the food allergies. A food allergy can develop at any time. So the first exposure to a food, and it's not always be obvious when that occurs, so causes the body to develop antibodies. Then the second or subsequent exposure triggers an attack. So it is very important that if anyone has food allergies, the first aider and teachers are aware of what the allergy is and what the res uh, response is so the appropriate action can be taken immediately. And also additional notes for the first aider. Again, this is our part or the tour agency. We need to be aware of the health issues, especially the special needs, the physical, dietary, and emotional, and also the allergies. What are the triggers of the allergies, the reactions, and the treatment for the allergies? So reminder, you are responsible of the following. First, ensuring you do not place yourself or others at risk of injury during the tour. Do not place yourselves or others at risk. The second one, consulting. Consulting with a tour guide or tour escort or teachers in relation to appropriate risk control measures. You need to consult. Okay, you not just act by yourself. You need to ask help suggestions from the tour guide, tour escort, or the teachers. And also reporting the hazards associated with the tour. You need to report the hazards okay, to the responsible person. And also reporting every incidence and injury irrespective of its seriousness to the tour guide, tour escort, or the teachers. Okay, again, you need to report every incident and injury in respective of its seriousness. So we are done with the six areas for the tour orientation. Okay. So if you have some queries, concerns, clarifications, comments, and suggestions, please chat in the chat box in this Google Meet. And I believe you also have put the queries, concerns, clarifications, comments, suggestions in the Google form. So we will answer all your queries, all of these things. Okay. We will have this matrix of your questions and we will provide answers. So we will not um, ask you some questions, concerns, or anything on this one in this online uh, meetup because we only have this limited time. So I expect that after two weeks or three, uh, I mean, one to two weeks, we're going to answer your queries, okay, in our most convenient time. So, thank you, and see you in Cebu on April 1 to 3, 2024. So, again, as we wrap up today's orientation, I want to thank each and every one of you for spending your time, especially via online. I don't know where you are right now. Uh, thank you for your enthusiasm and commitment to making this educational tour as a su successful one. So I hope you feel excited and prepared for the adventure that awaits us in Cebu. And remember, this trip is not just about exploring a new destination, but also about learning, growing, and building lifelong memories together. 
So let's set on this journey with an open mind, a spirit of curiosity and willingness to embrace new experiences. So hoping that we will have a safe travel in Cebu. Thank you. Bye-bye.